With sport, you can change so many people's lives. People's thinking and it can break barriers. I think it's a great way of doing it. Like many aspiring young cricketers, I wanted to play here at the home of cricket and represent my country. I visualise hitting sixes into the crowd and taking wickets in front of thousands of fans. But only handfuls earn that privilege. Even fewer come from the British Asian community. Moen Ali, the poster boy of English cricket, is set to be a key figure for England in the Ashes Tour taking place in Australia. Last year, he and three fellow British Muslims made history when they stepped up to play for the national test side. So was this a watershed moment in English cricket? Many British Asians play the sport in this country, but very few play professionally. You are good enough, to, regardless of what race and what colour, you know, you'll get your opportunity. Within that community, if I can inspire as many people to take up the game, that, that's great as well. All age cricketers of an Asian background in the England team is a huge thing. Whether that necessarily filters through the system is another question. It's not about what colour, where you're from, or anything like that. It's about if you score your runs and, and do your work to the best of your ability, then you've got a great chance. I'm going back to where it all started to find out how they reached the top and the challenges they faced along the way. I'm Ankur Desai, and this is England's Muslim Cricket Stars. My first port of call is Birmingham, the home of Moen Ali. Coming from a Pakistani background, he grew up in the working class area of Spark Hill and decided from an early age that cricket would be his passport to a better life. Okay, Mo, um, let's first of all talk about familiar surroundings. What's it like being back here, first of all, in this science lab, walking the corridors around here? What are the memories that strike you, first of all? Oh, first of all, it's obviously great to be back. It brings back a lot of memories. Um, I had good friends here. Surroundings were very similar, probably the best days of my life. When, when at school where they'd say to you, what do you want to be when you're older, etc, etc, would you always write down cricketer or professional sportsman? Yeah, it was always going to be cricketer. Probably I didn't realise I was going to play this much for England, but I just knew cricket was the one. When I was in school here, my dad said, from 13 to 15, he told me for two years, give me two years every day after school. That's unusual because a lot of South Asian parents would be like, no, focus on your studies. My biggest advice would be for the parents. With my father, this is what he did. And then after he said, after 15, then do what you want, knowing that if I work hard at that age, that I will. The hard yards and sacrifices paid off handsomely this summer. Moen became the first player ever to score more than 250 runs and take 25 wickets in a four-match test series. One of the perks is now being able to drive to games in luxury cars, but when he was starting out, it was touch and go as to whether he'd even make it to the match at all. Against Middlesex for Worcester, actually, so we were going to Worcester. We had patches on the car. You can literally see bits of the road from under. And we had to stop every 10 minutes for 20 minutes because the car was overheating. So we had to wait another 20 minutes to calm down and drive another 10 minutes. So we had that sort of struggle. We were financially nowhere. We had a game, three of us, we had one pound left after petrol's been paid and we had to buy a loaf of bread. And there are tough times, but when you know the work that they've put in in you, you sort of work even harder for them as well as yourself. And, and that really drives you when you look at their struggle for you and it drives you. And I think it spurs you on to really want to do it for yourself and obviously for them. Making it as a cricketer at any cost is something which Moen's England teammate, close friend and fellow Muslim Adil Rashid relates to. I'm travelling to Bradford to first meet him at his local cricket nets where he trains when he's back home. The landscape in Bradford has evolved over the years. Mosques now complement churches to reflect the changing face of the city, with many British Asians moving here during the 60s and 70s. There's a big Asian community here. Asians everywhere, restaurants everywhere. Everybody knows everybody around here and yeah. stuff, so that, that's the good thing. The Yorkshire leg spinner has established himself in the England setup with some match-winning performances in recent yeah. years. What was it about 
about your family, your upbringing, that, that allowed you to have the environment to thrive and to pursue a career? Did they ever say to you, no, don't play cricket, as a, it's, it's never going to be a career? Nah, so mine was the opposite. My, so my dad, he really encouraged me to play sports. So dad put cricket back in my hand. From there, you just go with the flow and then you just pick it. We start loving the game and you start enjoying it. And that's, and that's what exactly what happened. And from there, you know, you start taking it serious. Well, some people will say, well, put, you know, going for a cricket career is a bit of a gamble. You might not make it. I didn't think about that. That actually did not cross my mind, oh, if I don't do this, what am I going to do? So that I was just going to do it. I remember, I remember my dad used to take me to games. He used to go taxis late nights, come back six, seven in the morning. But then I had a game half nine, two, three hours away. So he had to stay awake, take me to the game for two, three hours, stay with me the whole game, come back, go back to sleep, go taxis. Because he used to work hard back then as well, because, you know, it was uh, hard times for them when they first came over. So he sacrificed all his life. Uh, basic for you know for, for my cricket so all this time was purely just for my cricket and you know thank, thank you for him and thank God that I'm in the position. Despite his success Idle never forgot his Yorkshire roots starting an academy to help more Asian kids play professionally. So that's that's a way of people coming there and you know getting through that way so that's another way through the system is through my academy to Yorkshire age groups or whatever so that's why I put that there so people can come yeah, and actually fantastic. think yes we have, we, have, we have that opportunity now to, to go to the next level. I'm on my way up to Bolton to meet England's youngest ever test opener. While most 19-year-olds are at uni studying and playing video games with friends, Haseeb Hamid was making his international debut against India in his father's home state. And he still has fond memories of meeting a couple of his childhood heroes during that historic series last year. And Dawkins Kohli, you met them uh, in the last year. Just tell me what that was like and what you took from those meetings. Sachin Tendulkar spoke about he spoke about continuing to have that passion for the game. A lot of people can lose that because of the intensity of international cricket. Um, you forget why, you know, the old adage of remember why you started playing the game and things like that. And he was actually quite big on that. Similarly, he also said be true to yourself and make sure, make sure you remember what has got you here. Did that give you that extra little. Philip, that extra little bit of even that tiny five ten percent. Does that did that give you something? Just Absolutely. Being his the um, moment I, the moment I stepped into his house, I got an extra fifty percent. Um, it was you know it's an unbelievable honour. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's difficult for me, but it was an unbelievable honour. Something that I could only have dreamt of, I'd say, and to have actually been there and done that is quite amazing. Yeah, still have to pinch myself at times, but you know it just goes to show what sort of people. They both are. You know, they've inspired me a lot and they still continue to, to inspire me. Um, and hopefully if I can be like that for someone in the future generation, then that would be, you know, an extremely proud moment for me. For a young cricketer at the start of his career, Hasib thrived being around his peers during his debut. When I played um, in a team with Moin, Adil and Zafa in my debut game, that was exactly the sort of thing that um, kind of I guess opens people's eyes to what can be achieved. I think that's one of the proud moments that I was able to experience in that game. For someone full of passion for their sport to another who seemingly lost his, meet Zafar Ansari. He made his debut last winter in Bangladesh and India, but upon his return, made the surprise decision to retire from the sport at the age of just 25. He's now pursuing a legal career and working with the charity Just For Kids Law in London. Was it an emotional decision when you finally decided to quit the game? It was really emotional. I was like, you know, when you get that choking feeling when you're trying to hold back the tears. And I sat in front of the, the team and, and I explained my decision. And a lot of them probably knew it was coming or, or had that feeling that, that something was on the horizon. But I think just to explain it directly to them and to look into people's eyes and and say to them, I don't want to do this anymore, despite you know, being very grateful and, and having loved it, was, was a really hard thing. I realised that cricket needed to become my life and, and I wasn't really willing or, or probably ready to, to, to devote myself to it in that way. Zafar had toyed with the idea of quitting cricket for some time and the penny possibly dropped during that test match last year in Rajkot. When he was without his phone and couldn't follow the US election results, Instead of enjoying the cricket in front of him, his mind was elsewhere. On the day that Donald Trump was elected, um, we had no access to, to the world, really. Um, we were focused on watching Mo and Ali and Joe Root 
um, score hundreds. So it was, it was nice to watch them bat. But equally, I think having that story um, and that event taking place while we were out there, for me was really important because it did give me a kind of an outlet. It was a weird day and, and the kind of, the only people who were allowed their phones are the security people. So there were little snippets of information, Florida's gone this way, Pennsylvania's gone this way, and you started to gather a picture, but it was really only when kind of the last ball was bowled and the kind of luggage case came out with our phones that we were able to look and, and see the kind of what had unfolded. He also comes from a different background to the others, something he's very aware of. His father is Pakistani, his mother white. They're both academics and Zafar is a double first graduate from Cambridge University. But spending time on the road with the other three players helped give him another perspective. Did you guys have discussions about your upbringing, your backgrounds, your cultures and things like that? Massively. And, and I learned a huge amount spending kind of three months with the other three guys. And, and it was a really nice opportunity to spend time with three other you know, young British Muslims, young British Asians who um, had, a, you know, had, had very different backgrounds. And I, I definitely gained a huge amount from that. You know, at the same time, that was only a small part of our relationship. We were friends, you know, because we were friends. It certainly wasn't the defining aspect of, of our friendship. Having four strong examples from the British Asian diaspora is something which the England and Wales Cricket Board realise they need to capitalise on further if they're going to tap into the best talent in the country. Their research has found that almost 40% of recreational cricket is played by South Asians. But that number shrinks to only 4% who end up making it as professionals, and that's just at county level. Cricket charity Chance to Shine are hoping to reach out to diverse communities and bring about better representation in the national game. I'm going along to a street cricket session in North London, which is trying to take the sport to thousands more young people in inner city areas and communities affected by youth crime and antisocial behaviour. I mean, there's fanatic followership of cricket in South Asia. So therefore, to use cricket um, and to engage with communities at a local level in ways such as this is very valuable to us and we think gives a lot of value to the people involved and to the communities that we touch through it. As a group, these four young players have become poster boys for British Asians in the country, with Moen very much seen as one of the key faces of the Muslim community, and he feels he has a duty to help others to understand both his religion and culture better. In, there's so much negativity about it um, in people's minds with the media, etc. And for me, as a Muslim to be playing, I'm hoping that people look at it and think, actually, you know, Muslims are not, they're not bad people. And even with my teammates, I, I'm sure and I'm, I hope that they think, you know, Muslims are good people to be around. And there's, um, you know, there's obviously a minority of people who do commit bad things, but that's in that's in all walks of life, I guess. And I'm hoping that I can inspire other people of all different faiths to not be afraid of practicing whatever they want to practice and, you know, still be a, a player, a cricket player or a sports player, whatever it is you want to be. And that is essentially my, my main sort of aim, really. Adil's now taking me around his local area. Like Moen, his faith plays a huge role in both his personal and professional life. Yeah, this mosque is uh, fairly new, actually. Yeah, so we're going through Great Horton here. So we're heading towards now uh, the university, the college area. Yeah, there's a few restaurants there that I go to regularly. The shimmers and stuff, and there's a few restaurants. You talk about your faith with Mo quite a lot, with Moeen? Yeah, definitely. Me and Mo, we've been talking about that quite a lot. Yeah, what sort of uh, conversations do you have? You know, just general talks and first, you know, prayer, and we used to talk about the history of, you know, the religion, you know, back in the days to now, and. Uh, what we need to do, what we must do, what we have to do. So that with me and more, we're always constantly always on top of each other in that sense, and which has helped, which helps massively as well. Because uh, even when we go to Australia or whatever, when we get in, when we do get into an environment where things are, you know, testing, challenging for us, we got to keep make sure we keep reminding each other, you know, of what, what our limits are and whatever it is. As I said in the media, where you know uh, Islam says this about our religion. The headlines comes with something to do with Muslim. You know, you can feel a bit isolated, you can feel a bit, you gotta actually explain to the people what Islam is, what, what being a Muslim and what Muslim is. 
th there was a, a really pertinent moment I noticed in the summer. Mm. So, you know, yeah. you guys won a series, mm. the lads are all celebrating spraying champagne around, and you and Mo are, are, mm. are a fair distance away, and it's a, quite an interesting photograph with you guys away from, you know, the alcohol. Uh, I thought that was a, a really interesting but, but quite a poignant moment. Yes, we come across that quite a lot, you know, winning the series uh, since 2015. So we've always had that in mindset, okay, every time we go on, okay, we'll, we'll do whatever, shake hands, collect the trophies, but as soon as we get the champagne, whatever, me and you'll just jump off the back. Even though they're professional cricketers playing on the world's biggest stage, they're also affected by many of the same issues which impact the lives of other Muslims in the country. Are you aware of Islamophobia growing up in the north and not being far from Manchester, you know, where the arena attack took place? You get people that understand, that, that realise that maybe it's a small minority who are um, doing things that are against the religion and maybe using the religion as a tool to justify their actions, which is totally wrong. Um, but similarly, you get other people who don't maybe understand as much. And again, for us, it's important to try and portray that Muslims aren't like that. They're not taught to be like that. Again, the, the attack that you mentioned was so close to home. Um, you know, maybe what people don't realise, or some people may, may not realise, is it affects British Muslims as well. I mean, you know, my sister and where she works was, you know, within a stone throw's distance away from where the attack took place. You know, I remember the next day, she was actually held back at work. I mean, the, the whole centre was on lockdown, I think, because of, because of fears and you're kind of ringing, ringing her from home, hoping she's okay. And, you know, I hope people realise that, um, you know, what, what people like that are doing is completely against the religion that, you know, I believe in. And, it's, it's all about us standing together, making sure that this country moves forward in the right way and we all unite together to, to fight against pe um, people like that. Back in London, despite now being retired from cricket, Zuff has been thinking further about how spending time on the road with Moin, Adil and Hasib illustrated the diversity of Muslims in the UK. You know, playing as a group of four British Asians, British Muslims in the England team was something that we were all incredibly aware of and very proud of. And I think that that was something that really brought us together. I think at the same time, you know, understanding that there was a huge amount that differentiated us as a group of four. Um, and one of those things being that I had come from a de very different background and that complexity within the group was also important to us, that we were different, we are different sorts of Muslims. And, you know, and, and I think that kind of recognising that was an important thing within the group. Um, and hopefully, you know, outside of it. And, and you know, the fact that Moen, Adil, Hasib are all role models and, and present themselves so well is something that matters a lot. On the other hand, I think it, it's difficult because, um, you know, when someone becomes or is treated as a representative, it sort of boxes them in at times. And um, there is so much more to Moen and to Adil and, and to all of them than their ethnicity or their religion. That, that is kind of a, you know, there's a slight tension in that. Um, and I think that they have not coped with it, but they, they deal with it incredibly well. Um, and they acknowledge how significant what they do is. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I think there's a slight, uh, it's slightly problematic at times because um, it becomes more about their identity than about, you know, the complexity of who they are as, as people. The question of whether we'll see more follow in the footsteps of these four young British Asian men continues to play on my mind. Having visible role models are crucial in influencing the next generation of budding cricketers, but much of this responsibility is heaped on the shoulders of Moen. I always came across a lot of South Asian guys of my age or just above me and who were playing county at the time and they would say, oh no, we have to give it up because we want to go into education. And for me, it was a, it a cop-out. That's not the reason why you didn't make it, it's because you, you gave up and I think that sometimes we do that quicker than everybody else as South Asians, we give up on things and we don't, you know, sometimes you've got to go through that hard bit or the graft we don't like putting in, not everybody, mm. but in, I'm just talking uh, from what I've experienced and I've always felt if I work harder than everybody else and score more runs than everybody else, take more wickets, mm. then it's gonna, they have to pick you at some stage. Though Moen's currently at the peak of his powers, being the face of British Asians in cricket is something Hasib could inherit. But is that something he's comfortable with? You know, I think it's good now that we've had someone like Moen Ali, um, Adil Rashid, those guys. You know, that's one of the main things. Having a role model now at the highest level is going to be massive. You know, one of the most pleasing things for me has been when a few parents have come to me and said, actually, having seen you play, we, we believe, we, you know, our son or 
our daughter can go on to play international cricket for England and that makes you extremely happy because that's one of the main things you know that you want to try and do as well you want to inspire the next generation and coming from a South Asian background you know, within that community if I can inspire as many people to take up the game that that's great as well so you know the more people like myself and Mo and Ali can can kind of set an example that would be good for you know future players coming through I hope. After leaving his old school, Moen took me back to his old cricket club, the place where he first started to make a name for himself. It's a pre-beard. Uh, I remember this game as well, um, but yeah, no, it was uh, my Warwickshire days, and that's exactly how I used to play. It's literally, that shot would sum up my sort of way of batting. Are there any misconceptions people might have about you? I think people think I'm a serious guy uh, a lot of the time, or... Uh, very religious guy and obviously we all have our abilities and we try our best and do our prayers and all that kind of stuff but I'm not as serious as probably what people think uh, I like to have a laugh and joke especially around my teammates but I've got to be comfortable around the environment and stuff first um, well so I, I don't know if they have whatever else there is but um, with the platform you now possess and the profile you possess do you think that you want to use that in in a, in a in a different environment? Would you like to do something um, on a more expansive basis? Have you ever thought yeah. about it? Or do you, is, is there anything which like makes you think, you know, I'd love to do this, I'd love to do that, whether it's humanitarian work or... Yeah, I mean, there's always charity work, all that kind of stuff, but um, I would still take cleaning toilets in a mask and uh, having my own chip shop or something like that, you know. What would you call it? Uh, big mask. During this journey, we've heard unique thoughts from a group of unique young men. Rarely do we hear such insight into faith and identity from international sports stars, as well as their views on how the prospects for future generations... The headlines come from something to do with Muslims. You know, you can feel a bit isolated, you can feel a bit... You've got to actually explain to the people what Islam is. There's so much talent out there and, and we've all seen it, we all talk about it but we need to tap into it. And you probably don't necessarily see the trickle down from having those three or four guys at the top. It's possibly too soon to know whether four British Muslims playing for the England cricket team is a watershed moment or not. On the eve of the ashes, one has retired, one is injured, while another's not currently being selected for the test side, leaving Moen Ali as the sole representative. Uh, it's slightly problematic at times because um, it becomes more about their identity than about, you know, the complexity of who they are as, as people. As to whether we'll ever see nearly half the England team come from a Muslim background again depends much on the legacy left behind by this group of players.